Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to face something that many artists are struggling with and it's the fear of the green color. And I myself have been facing this struggle a lot in my experience as, as a painter and as an artist. Green color is never quite easy to use. And if you wander in an art supply store, you will see thousands of different shades of green colors. And as a beginner artist, you may just jump and buy all the greens that you need, because of course, if you are painting nature, nature is full of different types of green. I've always struggled to find the right shade of green for my paintings. Some of them are looking a little bit childish perhaps, or cartoonish, more illustrative as a quality. Some other are too dark, too muted, too transparent, too bright. It's never quite the shade that you want for your painting. So during the experience and the years as a painter, I came up with kind of a strategy that works for me to recreate those beautiful shades of green. That you can actually see in nature. And the secret that works for me may not work for you all, or you may have a different way of recreating these colors. I'm not going here to suggest to mix your own green paint, because first of all, I'm too lazy to do that. Second of all, it's quite difficult, and you probably end up a square one having too many colors that don't match what you want. So the way I develop my painting style is of using just one type of green. On this painting, in fact, I'm just using only one type of green, a couple of yellows, a couple of blues and a brown color. And that's it. And you will see how much variety you can create without falling into looking like an illustration or a cartoon. So I mentioned I'm using only one type of pre-mixed green and that is the magical Sap green. Sap green is uh, a sort of a light tone of green that may remind you of an olive green if you wish, but depending on the amount of dilution of your paint, it might be darker, it might be lighter, it might be more transparent, it might be more opaque. So it's a really versatile color. Sap green is a very ancient color. It was developed in Italy around 1300. Originally was made with uh, dry berries from a plant called uh, Bactrone, and I had to write it down because I have no idea about the name in English, but it looks like a blueberry type of uh, tree. Nowadays though, it's made with uh, two types of yellow, and the blue. It has the pigment HR70, which is a sort of Napoli's yellow, a very light yellow color, PY83, which is your primary bright yellow, PB15, which is a sort of ultramarine blue, a very, very cool blue. The light fastness of these pigments is usually very good and the color itself is quite transparent. So 
let's get into the magic on how I use a sub green as my main and only green. So I actually understood a little bit on how to use the qualities of a versatility of this green to change the shades but at the same time maintaining the quality of the green. I explain myself. This green is always a little bit muted, but it depends on what you mix it with. It will massively change, but still it will remain a little bit undertoned. As you can see just here, I've mixed the sub green with lemon yellow first and then with Prussian blue next two different tones of green but that creates two completely different feelings so this is what I mean you just need one green and a lot of other colors to go in with a lot of blues a lot of yellows warm blues warm yellows cool blues cool yellows you can use browns you can use eventually a bit of reds as well this will change your color massively but still will keep the qualities of this green and as per qualities i mean look at that this green looks exactly like the green you find in nature especially here in ireland where everything is basically bright Irish shamrock green. So in terms of mixing for this painting specifically, I used sub green, of course, Naples yellow, a darker and more warm yellow which if i'm correct is cadmium yellow deep u i use cerulean blue prussian blue and ultramarine blue for the very very dark shadows of green i'm mixing with a little bit of burnt amber and that's basically it you don't need to spend hundreds of euros on massive green palettes just get a good quality sub green and work around with the other colors that you already have. Also, I found that having a more limited palette is very helpful, especially if you are a beginner artist, not to get confused and to keep your painting quite uniform and making sense to all of it. So that's it for today, I really hope you enjoy this video and if you try this little trick just share with me your creation or let me know what you think. Please subscribe to my channel and hit the thumbs up button, this will massively help my tiny channel to have some visibility and grow a bit. And if you are interested in this painting you can find it for sale in my Etsy shop and the links are in the description below. I'll see you very soon and uh, Sloan, bye bye!